Excellent connection, it says. Hello, testing, one, two, three. Hello, testing, one, two, three. Is this thing on? Are we broadcasting? Are we going out live? Ingrid, all right. Sounds good. Okay, tag us. Okay, update on the Eclipse 2024. We got a good signal. Good, good, good. Let's see if we can fine-tune this a little better. Let's put this over here this time so I can keep track of what's going on in the chat. Check it out. It is working here on Zoom Earth. Just as I predicted, we can begin to see the Eclipse in real time, or well, with a 10-minute delay, no correction, 20-minute delay in 10-minute segments we can begin to see the solar eclipse there it is right there can you see that so it's beginning the great total solar eclipse of 2024 has just started so that we're going to track the uh those um nasa jets that are going to research that give a little uh discussion on that and see how this plays out live Okay, well, here is the, the plan for the eclipse today from NASA, starting at 1220 CST. It's going to show up down here in, uh, well, around uh, Mazatlan area, and then cut across uh, Texas from the south to the northeast, just like this. So they're going to get a good, what do you call it, penumbrum, right down here low uh, in Texas, and then it's going to oblong out a little bit as it goes across the United States. And, of course, the big question is... The weather, and that's why we're here on Zoom Earth, we can see the cloud cover here just to the east of Dallas. This might mess it up for, for quite a few of the viewers. If you're south and east of Dallas, you're going to be in some clouds, but this, this eclipse should go right along the edge of this cloud cover. And if we back this up, and we can see the clouds are kind of paralleling the course of the eclipse. But this is just amazing to see this begin to unfold on Zoom Earth. Now, uh, let's go to, let's try Stellarium. I pulled Stellarium up here. Unfortunately, I can only get Stellarium to uh, track my location here in Northern California. We're only going to get 30, 40% <clears throat> coverage of this eclipse or less today. But here on Stellarium, you can begin to see the sun and the moon getting closer together here at our location in California. If I could move this Stellarium map over to Mazatlan, we'd see it much more clearly. Okay, the aircraft that we're tracking today are the WB-57 research jets, and here they are on Flight Radar 24. This is November 926 November Alpha, which departed Houston earlier today. This is one of two NASA jets that are going to be um, investigating this eclipse today let's find 926 november alpha and here comes 927 november alpha the second wb57 which took off looks like out of el paso earlier today and they are chasing the eclipse right down here to mazatlan to get caught up with the eclipse that we just saw beginning to form here on zoom earth so they're right down in here in mazatlan going to get right in the path of this total solar eclipse and the plan for these wb-57 jets is they've got uh, special cameras loaded up on the aircraft to do spectral imaging of the corona of the sun and this uh, eclipse offers a very unique opportunity for them to do this because this is a perfectly set up total eclipse where the sun perfectly blocks or correction the the moon perfectly blocks the sun. They can look deep into the corona of the sun, something they can't normally do with, with telescopes. And so with these spectral uh, imaging cameras on board the aircraft, they're going to try and, and research what is going on with the corona of the sun. How does it work? What are the temperatures? What are the driving forces? What are the uh, minerals involved with this? Um, what is the source of the solar wind? A ton of questions they're going to try and get answered. And this is a follow-on experiment to one that they did back in the 2017 solar eclipse where they chased the eclipse 
uh, in trail formation like this to extend the eclipse uh, uh, duration. This time they're going to be more uh, parallel to each other in order to get the same data at the same time and then compare the data and, and uh, knock out any anomalies, I suppose, in the data. So these jets will be, tr well, they're right now they're at 50,000 feet. Can you see that? Yeah, 50,000 feet. Let me slide that over just a little bit. 50,000 feet and uh, 339 knots. And they're going to have to spin around pretty soon here and they will chase the eclipse. So that will give them, as opposed to somebody on the ground who's only at uh, probably, I think you're going to get a total of up to four minutes of totality if you're in the right spot. These guys will get six or seven minutes of totality by chasing the eclipse at 300 knots. Remember, the eclipse is tracking across the country at 1500 miles per hour and these jets can only go about 300 miles or 300 knots at um, 30,000 feet and 30 or correction 50,000 feet and 50,000 feet gets them above the atmosphere high enough to get in good clear air to maximize their um, research and minimize the amount of interference with the atmosphere now I lost the stream where did the stream go there it is all right Okay, checking the comment section here real quick. Yeah, great tip about Zoom Earth. So get over here on Zoom Earth and watch this thing tracking across. Very interesting. And look at it just pop right up there. Vancouver, Canada. Zero today. Rain, rain, rain. Ah, overcast and rainy there in Texas. Darn it. NASA TV. Yeah, NASA TV is firing up their presentation here. Uh on the NASA YouTube channel. Let's take a closer look at those WB-57s. This is pretty cool. This is post-World War II technology. This is from uh, the NASA Johnson YouTube channel. Just make sure you can see all that okay. I'm blasting off. Let's see. Yep, that's working good. Blasting off, I believe, out of Houston. So these are... Um, early jets these are apparently the only three flying wb-57s left in the world they were designed pretty much as high altitude research uh, jets and reconnaissance jets there was a squadron of them i believe in uh, new mexico back in the day um, so up there in the nose is one of several cameras and out on the wings you'll see a couple of pods where now the, i don't see the pods on this aircraft oh and down here in the belly they've got another piece of research equipment that is going to study the ionosphere and they're going to study how does the shadow of the moon affect the ionosphere as it tracks across the earth and what is that possible impact on things like gps signals for example so just an incredible bunch of research they're getting out of these old jets uh, today at nasa i'd like to see one with the with all the um, pods on it well let's let's go look over here By the way, there was a couple old Canberra jets located here in Northern California at Lakeport, California, used for atmospheric research, and they are still there. The contract is over, and so the jets are basically abandoned. Uh, where did they put the airport at? Mm, oh, I lost it. <laughs> How embarrassing. Here it is. <laughs> the pilot can't find the airport. There's the two Canberra jets still sitting at... Lakeport Airport here in Northern California near Clear Lake, California. Now, where was that? Where were they talking about the restoration of these aircraft? Uh, I lost it. Here it is. Okay, so here's part of the restoration of these old uh, WB-57 high-altitude aircraft. Just a huge wing on these things. There's the one camera bay up in the nose. More equipment there on the fuselage. And then they also have additional equipment available out on the wings. All right. Now that looks like a jet engine on that one. But look at those big floppy wings on this thing. So that's a little view of the restoration of these aircraft to get them 
up to speed for this kind of research that they're using using them for today. Quick look at the comment section. Thanks, Orbital. One of five. There's five WB-57s that are airworthy. I think there's only three of them that are airworthy. Research. Oh, no, Raphael, see ya. <laughs> Pima Air Museum, do they got a couple down there in the boneyard? Yeah. Clear skies in Columbus, Ohio. Morgan Hill says hi. Maine is clear as a bell. Good. Okay, let's see where those guys are at now. They're so they're continuing off out to sea now with the November 926 November Alpha. One of the two uh, WB-57s. And back here on FlightAware, where is the other one? Nine two six. Where's nine two six? Nine two seven. There it is. Okay, nine two seven. November Alpha is falling in trail right now of nine two six. And I think both of them are at about fifty thousand feet, or correct, yeah, fifty thousand feet, and tracking down to catch the eclipse as it rolls on in. A lot of interesting orbital mechanics that got to take place to make this the perfect total eclipse. Uh, mechanics that I barely understand, but. Uh, Folks like Scott Manley can probably do a much better job of explaining, but we've got to get, <laughs> you got to get lined up a couple of things in order for this to happen. Um, the ecliptic orbit around the sun versus the moon's orbit around the earth, which is off by about five degrees. They've got to line up in the nodes right here. These two nodes are the only time you're going to get one of these perfect total eclipses and not only that you got to get these nodes lined up and the the moon's orbit is constantly wobbling on you um you got to get the distance of the moon just right from earth because the lunar orbit is slightly elliptical and so sometimes you get the moon real close to the earth you can see those super moon full moons they call it in the media and then you can see full moons that are where the moon looks a bit smaller so you got to get that distance just right to where the diameter of the moon and the diameter of the sun as observed from earth are about the same diameter and you put them together and that's where you can see the deep part of the corona of the sun and that's what's so special about today's eclipse that allows so much great research to happen and uh, this young gal here from from nasa let's see if i can find her video Oh, there's, there's, uh, yeah, there's NASA live beginning to show the, uh, at Mazatlan, beginning to so, show a big chunk of the uh, sun taken out there. There's a gal here at NASA. Yeah, this gal here, Mallory Yates. She's, she's going to be on board one of these uh, research vessels vehicles today one of the wb-57s and she's gonna she says here in this interview with the bbc she says she hopes she doesn't screw up the data uh today in in capturing this eclipse she's got a very she says she's got a very small keyboard and a very small mouse to work with and there's she's in a crew position behind the pilot in order to run the cameras and capture the data on board the wb-57 See if this shows some of the additional pods. There's some of the uh, camera work on the nose of the aircraft. And that's what they're looking for. They want to get deep into that corona to s figure out what's going on there. I don't see any of the other pods on board that aircraft in this video. And that's what it looks like from inside the aircraft. So just some fascinating research. 
So get out there today and watch this eclipse if you're anywhere in the neighborhood. Don't forget your approved glasses. Protect your eyes. Check the comment section here real quick. What do we got? 1,600 folks watching. Yeah, Pac-Man type eclipse. Yeah, does that count as nighttime? <laughs> Torrejon, Mexico, looks like they're getting some clouds there. <laughs> Stay out of the, it's the Corona, the sun's Corona, not Corona beer. <laughs> Getting deep into Corona beer. Anytime you head south. Welding helmet. No, I've never seen an eclipse from a flight deck there, Defender. Uh, starting to get dim there at Wichita, Texas already. Good. A bite here in Northern California already. All right, stand by. Let me take a quick look. Out the window here, see if I can see anything. trees in the way nothing but trees in the way here i'll have to duck outside but i want to get outside and watch this south africa checks in all right clear skies outside chicago camera and filter good broken clouds in tennessee a bite you're seeing a bite down in san diego already good iss yeah satellites yeah, there is a lot of different research that can be done from space as well, but not sure how that, well, there's a whole probe that they sent to the sun to uh, study the sun as well. And that's just a fascinating topic in its own. Yeah, what about the Sophia 747? How come that couldn't get involved with this? Did the contract run out on that? Chris Farina, are you in the house? Give us an update on that. Chris was one of the crew members on the Sophia 747. NASA sending a drone up to 10,000 feet at the local Army base uh, to check the weather at totality. Yeah, so see how much the, the uh, temperature drops and humidity increases. Yeah, I think they retired, Sophia. Blue skies in Trinity County. Yeah. Retired last year. Thanks, uh, Cap cap flyer yeah okay let's see if we can get an update on zoom earth there yep yeah, it's it's trucking along pretty fast so there you can see the uh the shadow of the moon popping out there at sunrise and getting ready to head across the a good portion of the United States. There was another bit of me orbital mechanics I'm going to look at there. This bit here, a total eclipse. This is interesting. Total eclipse versus an annular eclipse versus a partial eclipse. Again, you get this distance just right. The moon, sun, and earth distance and those nodes lined up you take the tangent from the sun run it across the moon and that's where you get that dark penumbra that's only about 115 miles across traveling at a rate of about 1,500 miles per hour across the United States like that giving you the the total darkness right there so for those folks inside that that narrow band are going to get the show of a lifetime. I've seen a lot of partial eclipses, but not a total eclipse quite like that. Let's get an update on our jets. Ah, oh, look, they're turning around. The RB-57s are turning around and are beginning to chase, get in position to chase the jets. Yep, there he is. All right, check this out. This is like an air refueling track. 
Oh, he's gonna is he gonna do a double loop back? So this is how we used to do air refueling in our Air Force days is we'd set up a track out there and do a rejoin. Let's stick with this a little bit and see see how this track plays out here. So that's November 926 November Alpha <clears throat> and November 927 November Alpha. And they they said that they were going to get side by side along each other during this eclipse as opposed to uh, in line. And if you're just joining us, that's what we're talking about today. The WB-57 aircraft, research aircraft from NASA that are chasing the total solar eclipse today that is starting right now. Where is it? As of 1010, it was located right down here just off the coast of Mexico. Completely overcast in Minneapolis. Don't join belly up. No, see, they they didn't do that. And he's doing a uh, a straight ahead rejoin, chasing him in in trail. All right, they got in position. That was a good job. They they joined up after flying all the way one from Houston, and the other one from uh, El Paso. Hooked up over Mazatlan, and now they're they're hooked up together. So let's see who's in the lead there. That is uh, nine two seven. Okay, the one interesting. So the one out of El Paso is the one that took the lead, and the one out of Houston got here first and did the uh, orbit to get in position. See what's going on over here at uh oh, there's the space station <laughs> i don't think they're going to be able to see much of anything but mazatlan it's it's headed for totality at mazatlan 29 wow they got a half an hour to go to get totality at mazatlan So it'll be interesting to watch these guys work together and then as they turn around and get lined up and go with the eclipse to the north and east and begin capturing all their very interesting data to study the corona of the sun. Space weather is becoming a bigger part of our daily weather brief at the airlines. Uh, it can interrupt things like HF, high-frequency radio communications. It could potentially disrupt things like GPS signals and things that we rely on for navigation as well, though I've never seen that happen yet. But the more we know about it, the better off we'll be. All right. Let's take one more look at uh, Stellarium here where I'm at, and it's showing. All right, yeah, you should be able to, here in Northern California, e even see a little bite of the sun taking, taking place right now. Very interesting. Let me take one more look outside. Let's watch these guys. It's be interesting to see if they turn around at the end of this track here. I'll take a quick look. Stand by.
Yeah, there's definitely uh, a bite taken out of the sun at this point. And one of the things I forgot about was to watch the shadows. The shadows are very interesting to look at. You can cross your fingers like that and make a shadow and you'll see you'll see the bite taken out of the sun in the shadow. Um, and you'll see it in the shadow of leaves and that sort of thing. Try something here, eclipse shadows. Images, yeah. Yeah, you'll see all kinds of crazy images just like that. You'll be able to see the eclipse perfectly in the shadows of the leaves. So even if you're way out here in California, way far away from the eclipse, check out the shadows from it. Very interesting. Last time I did that, I was on a big old motorcycle ride, and it was just a blast to ride through the forest with shadows looking like that. <laughs> Okay, it looks like the WB-57s are continuing to head towards the eclipse. Now that they're rejoined in trail formation. Let's get an update from Zoom Earth. They're headed right towards it. There's Mazatlan. So they'll be coming into it and turning around soon. Checking out the comments here. Some clouds in Philly. Sun shining in Arlington, Texas. Good. Yeah, eerie shadows. And there goes Chewy barking about, about it. Have I ever seen space debris hit an aircraft? No, no. I'm not even heard of it yet. I I think about it from time to time, but I hadn't heard of that happening yet. Is there a smaller jet coming to join them? What's this one here? Uh, you know, pos well, the T-38s couldn't couldn't uh, hang out over water like this. Somebody coming in from San Jose Cabo. A Citation Mustang. He's at thirty six thousand feet. He's, I bet you he's going on a sightseeing tour of the eclipse as well. Interesting. And then overall, the flight, the flights are going to continue on all day, all the airline flights. Uh, there'll be a lot of general aviation aircraft. Um, well, hopefully the general aviation aircraft will just get to an airport and land and watch the eclipse from the ground rather than all try to crowd around uh, the narrow 100-mile wide shadow because all the general aviation aircraft would be you know pretty close to ten thousand feet or less on the altitude it could get pretty crowded there and there with the eight the local atc facilities will be too busy with ifr traffic to provide much separation from vfr traffic if it gets too busy out there so it'll be <laughs> see and avoid for sure and it's going to be harder well Maybe a little easier to avoid if it gets dark and then you see the lights. Let me get the dog in. Chewie, what's going on out there? Twenty three hundred folks still watching. Well, we'll stick with this for a few minutes and see what happens with these guys. See if they capture this. It's got to be getting, getting close to it. I'm sure they can see the shadow on the horizon. It sure would be nice to get a live view from these RB-57 aircraft as to what they're doing. There's Mazatlan, 22 minutes from totality. And there's the young NASA guys talking about, talking about the eclipse. But here's where the real research is going on. So I wonder what this citation's doing. Is he just going to hang out here and wait for it? 
And there's going to be some lucky airline passengers that are going to get a view of this as well. And this is why <laughs> you got to look outside, man. Get a window seat and look outside. Nobody looks outside anymore when they fly on the airlines, it seems like. And there's a lot of amazing stuff to look at out there, I think. External tanks, maybe, on those uh, WB-57 aircraft. Uh, yeah, so you're yeah, looking at this picture right here. I bet you're right. I bet some of that <coughs> is external fuel tanks, and, and some of this is uh, additional camera equipment. 174 knots at flight level 350. Wow, he's really slow flying it. That 208 knots. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's just, I think he's going to hang out and watch the show. Interesting. Why is the shadow only 100 miles wide? Well, back to this geometry over here. If I can find it. Da, 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 da. No. Well, there's there's one view of it. Because of this geometry here, you take the tangent from the uh, sun and run it across the uh, edges of the moon. And where those two converge, by the time you get to the distance between the moon and the earth, that yields a dark I'm sorry, umbra, I was missed. <laughs> the penumbra is the outside shadow. The umbra is the inner shadow and it works out to about 115 miles of total eclipse. And the rest of us just got the shadow of the penumbra to look at. So it all has to do with this geometry here. So figure out these distances and these angles and you'll get an A in your geometry course. They're still heading out to sea. Where's our eclipse at? Right there, as of 1020. It's 1048 local right now. And looks like Mazatlan's going to have a pretty good view of it. Just a few high, thin clouds. So they should be getting pretty close to into it by now. So I suspect any minute now they're going to be turning around and start chasing this, chasing this eclipse. Let's get a, a ping on the, let's get on the lead aircraft here, 927. He's got the lead. And watch him close, see what he does. Durango. Four minutes and 28 seconds of total uh, phase at NASA's Durango. Southwest of Hondo, Texas, a National Science Foundation jet is circling. Okay, good. Yeah, we're not staged closer to Mexico because probably because they need to be at their facilities where they can, um, they've got all their stuff, all their camera gear, all their people, all their guys, and um, they can quickly make that flight down to Mexico and they can quickly fix something if they need to. Um, Man, it'd be a terrible to scrub the mission. <laughs> I mean, this only happens once every so often. <laughs> How's that pot pie? South Florida checking in. Will the shadow be more distinct over land? Good question. I don't know. Here on Zoom Earth, this shadow here. Yeah, because what are we looking at? We're looking at the shadow on top of the clouds as well as over the ocean. Don't know. Let's stay tuned and see. High Cirrus moving from the west in Vermont. F-22 up. Wow. Yeah, P-3 you could stay up forever in a P-3. Yeah, who put the film in the camera? <laughs> Hopefully it's all digital now. Where's the SD card? Stupid GoPro. Uh, 
Uh, Cammy's in the right in the middle of totality, and it's a hundred percent cloudy. The ground speed of the shadow is 1,500 miles per hour. <laughs> so <laughs> ain't nobody keeping up with that, at least here in Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, I do too. I just love getting a window seat. And uh, Gemma says the same thing. Uh, and look outside when I'm, ever I'm on an airline flight. It's just as fascinating as when I was a kid, even though I do it for a living now. Got a partial eclipse going on in Kalispell, Montana. Audio still working okay. F-15 heading up the East Coast. Map says even with 100% um, cloud cover, it's still a very interesting phenomenon to watch the total eclipse. Okay, they're still tracking to the south west here they've not quite turned around yet <clears throat> that shadow of the moon is getting more distinct here on zoom earth the umbra flat gray 100 percent overcast in seattle yeah old british aircraft that's right who made the wb-57s was it a british electric uh, and was Glenn Martin also involved in the design? They do have quite a wing on them, and it reminds me a lot of the U-2. I wonder how much uh, Kelly stole from the design to do his YouTube design, U-2 design. The SR-71 could have kept up with it. That would have been something, huh? I wonder if they ever did that during the history of the SR-71, try to keep up with a solar eclipse yeah don't look directly at the sun wear your glasses english electric hundred percent cloud cover in newport and tennessee and raining okay you got they're getting good pinhole views in uh, phoenix with light clouds clear skies in louisiana Not quite totality yet at Mazatlan. 14 minutes out from totality, but just a sliver of the sun left. It's getting a little dimmer view there, it looks like, in the streets of Mazatlan. Oh, we got a turn. They're turning. Uh, come on. Oh. Now, where's my data? 49,000 feet, barometric, 51,000 feet, GPS altitude, 391 knots. I wonder if they're pushing it up now. Uh, now that they got into position, they were able to kind of cruise at a more economical uh, fuel setting. As they get turned around, they're going to want to push this thing up. So they've gone from 300 knots to 400 knots. Now, of course, you also got, let's check the winds as well. Hopefully, they'll have a bit of uh, tailwind working with them. Let's go to Windy. Let's check that. Let's go over here. Da, 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 da. Oh, let's see. That's at the surface. Let's see if we can get it to go with up to. Oh, come on. My big mouse has let me down. I can't get a hold of the right thing here. Anybody pull up the winds aloft at 50,000 feet for the area there? There's uh, 30,000 feet. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Look at this. Come on. 34,000 feet. Uh, those That jet stream is probably going to die off, won't you? Well, that's too high. Uh, can't get a hold of it. Let's try that again. Flight level 980, that doesn't count. Let's redo that. Okay. 
Okay, they're getting turned around. They've got 436 knots. Let's try windy one more time. Boom, boom. Down here. Now let's bring this up to 25, 10, 5, 6, 1, 4. Let's take it up to about 390. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, there's a good core jet stream from left to right, east to west. Um, 129, 140 knots of jet stream. So it's going to be a big old quartering tailwind that they'll have which will help them pick up their ground speed. 435 knots now. Okay, they're not quite getting side by side like um, the NASA scientist said at this point. It looks like they're still going in trail. Still at 50,000 feet. Let's see, they're right off that island there. I wonder if we can pick that up on Zoom. <laughs> it's all covered in shadow. Well, let's let's do the replay on this. <clears throat> Starting at nine ten local California time, up to current. Wow, it is tracking a little further. It's going to have to kind of bend up around over Dallas. And then over this way. So it's kind of doing an S shape here as it crosses the planet. Cloudy in Utah. Clouds broken in uh, Dayton. No, NASA is not just another silly actor. See ya. The moon shadow. That's right. Some breaks in the cloud cover at McKinney, Texas. Good. Uh, November 510 Lima Lima, the citation. Is that the one that's um, messing about here? What do we got here? Jet blue. Oh, these guys are getting a great view of it. They can see, if you look out your left window, you can see that shadow coming right at you. Aero Mexico. Here's the NA. Uh, Mm, no, that's a Gulf Stream. <laughs> wonder if uh, <clears throat> rich folks in their jets just come on down and hang out and take a look at this. That'd be a... <laughs> oh, yeah. This guy's just orbiting. <clears throat> now, he's not got the... Well, no, he ripped right across there, so he doesn't mind going out to, out over water. But he's looks like he's just going to orbit right here. Anybody else just hanging out? Charlie Delta. He's probably just working. <laughs> and Alaska. All right, where's our, there they are, Canberra's. So this must be it. They must be on their data run at this time. I don't think they're going to turn around and take another swing at it. I think they are. Clicking away and catching data. Maybe perhaps just a little bit ahead of the um, eclipse and let the eclipse kind of catch up to them from behind. Don't blow through all your data before you get totality. And there's where it's at right now. Well, what's this? They got another research. Oh, wow, look at that. They're using a uh, Platus PC-12 research vessel. At NASA. Okay, there is the real-time data. For the WB-57s. Checking the comments. <laughs> Herb says, how many folks are going to run out of fuel getting all distracted by the eclipse? That's a very important point, man. You got to, 
you get involved with a with a mission, you got to frequently um, <laughs> pull your head up and take a look and make sure what your fuel status is like. Uh, b- before we got started with the low level work, we'd run a pre low level checklist and verify all those sort of things. And verify your bingo fuel before you get all wrapped around in your work and distracted and run out of fuel. 50%, over 50% in El Paso, 50%. Um, oh, yeah, it's even getting a little dimmer outside here. Unnamed PC24 is orbiting, gaining a good shadow right here in Loomis, California. Uh, let's see. You two, do we got any U2s in the, in the air at this time? Anybody find find any u2s um pinion call sign uh is a typical call sign for the u2s out of beal the gulf stream came all the way down the coast and is now looping back up yeah bingo fuel man don't lose track of that <clears throat> little rock high thin clouds your time moves differently when you're on a mission that's where you get all wrapped up in your work man and before you know it Cloudy, but I caught some uh, oculation with the telescope. Good. Let's see. Niagara bottling came all the way from Louisiana, the Gulf Stream 4 that's circling. Uh, What do we got here? This is the citation with no call sign here on uh, Flight Radar 24. Four. Here's the Gulf Stream. He's hanging out in the area. Jet Blue, Aero Mexico, Alaska. These guys gotta. They just gotta keep going to work, man. Too bad they just can't do a couple of laps and <laughs> watch the eclipse. But no, they gotta keep keep going. All right. Meanwhile, our research vehicles are just hanging at fifty thousand feet and. Good, 478 knots of ground speed. They've really pushed it up and are taking advantage, of course, of that quartering tailwind. Uh, They've got to be tracking, you know, that's got to cause them to crab a little bit to stay on the course here for the eclipse with that quartering tailwind pushing them from left to right. And that's at... 39,000 feet. Now, as you get a little bit higher, I don't know, I'm going to mess with this, that that tailwind should, that jet stream should start to die off. Okay, here comes a landfall for the eclipse there. Right there at 940, or correction, 1040 local time. Mm. NASA. Ah, they're just talk talking. Let's see. Okay, look at that. Just a sliver of sunlight left in Mazatlan, Mexico. <clears throat> Again, if you're just joining us, we're tracking the WV 57 uh, NASA research aircraft, the old Canberra jets that have on board like seven different spectral cameras observing the corona of the sun during this uh, total eclipse where everything is perfectly lined up where they can see deep into the corona of the sun for the first time, much better even than with uh, telescopes that block the sun. I understand the telescopes that block the sun, they kind of block the lower part of the corona as well. And that's the critical part they want to learn more about, the physics of how that all works. Um, What is it made up of? What causes the temperature variations versus the brightness variations? Uh, What causes the solar winds? What causes the magnetic field to um, form and break apart and cause the eruptions? Just fascinating science.
November 135, Bravo Charlie. Robert says, uh, looks like they are going to follow the eclipse from Baja to Little Rock. Again, even, uh, like I said, that eclipse is cutting across <laughs> at 1,500 miles per hour. That's every 10 minutes. It's moving that much. So it's going to be very hard to keep up with it any more than the WB uh, 57s are only going to be able to keep up with it for about seven minutes of totality before it passes them right by. So hopefully they are right in the middle of it right now, getting their best data. Now, who's this guy? Okay. He's down low 36,000 feet. Good. So these guys are up high enough at 50,000 feet where they should be out of everybody's way. Welder goggles working all right. No, no SR-71s, Chris, are still flying. They're all in the museums now. AM-368. And then boom it all over, yeah. <laughs> you two at the coast of San Francisco, really? Let's see, I don't want to lose track of these well i don't think we'll lose track of them oh yeah what's this na let's see if i can click on that for a minute ah yeah good good he blasted out of uh beal there um roper 04 by the way that's one of the t38s from beal but uh here we got a u2 at sixty thousand feet and 395 knots that's pretty good for heading that direction um ground speed yeah when you get above that jet stream you, <laughs> you can really move out even a big old slow u2 aircraft so i wonder if he's involved uh, with today's uh, viewing or if that's just another um just another regular training mission all right now where were we here here we are Still tracking along at a ground speed of 481 knots. Good. So they are getting a good few minutes of uh, totality there. And over at Mazatlan, look at that. <clears throat> oh, boy. Look at that. They got it. Wow. Wow. So there you can begin to see some of the solar flares coming up from behind the moon. You can see some of the topography on the moon as well. But with this camera view, the corona is pretty dim. And one of the things they want to research is why the big temperature difference. Sometimes these bright flares we're seeing are of a lower temperature than the surrounding corona. And we still don't understand quite why that is. Our telescope operator, what? Did he trip over the <laughs> telescope? Wow, look at that popper right there. Poof. A million degrees just hanging out all around the sun. Yeah, why is this uh, why is this area so much hotter? Oh, look at that. We got a live view from inside the cockpit. That's got to be inside the WB57. Fantastic. Look at that. This is from the NASA live feed. Bring up that. Book. I love that they're waving to us. Oh, there you go. And now 
were flipped. Now we're seeing. We got it. So again, they are in night. I mean, it looks very dark with only some light on in, in the horizon. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's what we'll expect to, uh, if wherever we see totality. Is is the night sky is very dark. You might even see some planets or stars, um, and then you'll see the, like twilight all around in 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. What an amazing vantage point as well. My gosh. I'm very jealous. Kelly, are you jealous? I kind of feel I'm like you're jealous. I'm kind of a little jealous. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to, you know, see if I can make a faster plane so we can, you know, right. follow well, it all the whole way. Plus they're up above the clouds, so yeah. they don't have to worry. Worry about the clouds, exactly. <laughs> well, I do want to say a big thank you to the WB57 pilots and the whole team supporting them for that great view. That was awesome. Kelly, you know, you have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the sun. And, and for those watching, if you're interested in learning more with her, check out her and other experts featured in the sun series of NASA's Hey, you can see the clouds ripping by um, the telescope view there, but there's some great flares showing up as well. And here's a view, still a view from the WB57 on the right side of the screen. Huh. He's got the black dot right in the middle there, but... It's still showing a bright bit around it. Good flare down there on the lower right. Oh, you're going to get that diamond. Here comes the, the part everybody loves is the, uh, they call this, what do they call this? The diamond. When the sun begins to reappear, there it is. With a little bit of cloud cover makes it really spectacular. Wow. Then it just washes out everything. Holy smokes. Now they're changing the lens up here, maybe. Change the filter. Let's see. Yeah, my, my feed is behind the uh, the NASA feed here. Now they put that filter on there, it's less dramatic. It looks like they're going back talking about Artemis here. And you gotta sell their, sell the product. <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Oh, that's the wrong view, let's see. All right, so they're still, they're over land now. The uh, WB-57s are back over land, f feet dry. Um, the Citation Mustang still getting a good view in the orbit pattern there. So if they're only getting seven minutes of totality with the jets there, well, they're going to continue to chase it the whole way back home. They got to go back home anyways in that direction. I wonder where they were actually getting the data. Probably somewhere in a short seven minute run of this section of their flight right here. Let's check in with Zoom Earth. There it comes trucking across Mexico and headed for Texas. How about our U2 in California? What's he up to? And he's still he's still trucking off the coast there. Two NASA T thirty eights just north of Houston heading heading where? NB.
Yeah, uh, Jember, good point. The the that's what's so great about this particular eclipse is that the the geometry is just right such that at this distance, uh, the sun and moon and where the moon's at in its orbit, they are both about the identical diameter. So what is it, about four hundred times farther away the sun is, uh, but with that diameter and the earth's uh, and the uh, moon's orbit right now it's lining up just perfectly for a perfect total eclipse clouds between houston and austin are low and thick 100 percent covered bummer low pressure action let's see NASA just sent up a new plane from Galveston. Okay, November 960 is up. I was wondering about 960. They got three of them. Uh, let's see if we can track 960. 960. Um, it's what? November 960. November Alpha, right? Yeah. November Alpha. Where are you at? Wait a minute. They're showing a T38 there. Let's see. Live. Show me live. Where's it at? Wait a minute. I don't think it's a T. Is it a T38? Where is he at right now? Oh, he's just ripping up towards Dallas. All right. Maybe it is one of the 38s. There we are. Sky's clear in, in uh, Temple, Texas. Let me take a quick look at, because uh, it's getting a little dim outside the house here. Where did, uh, yeah, here's what we got going here in Northern California. Go take a quick look before we sign off here. Take a quick look at the shadows. Just like uh, uh, what Stellarium showing here currently, a big bite taken out of the sun on the lower portion, but no interesting shadows at this point. Where did Stellarium go? Yeah, it looks just like that uh, through the glasses on the back porch right now here in Northern California. Let's see what they're showing here in Mazatlan. Okay, there. Now, where's Torrejon? Okay. They got a different telescope here in Torrejon. They're getting their totality. Now, that's an interesting corona shot. 839,000 people watching NASA right now. Good shot of that Corona. Torrejon, Mexico. So let's see if that puts some. Wow, yeah, see it. <laughs> It passed them up. The eclipse has definitely passed them up. They're talking live totality right up here in Torrejon, Mexico, and the the research jets are back here. So it has definitely passed them up. And Zoom Earth is a good 20 minutes behind. So it's right up in here now. Oh, look at that.
we got three minutes of totality. And there's that big flare like we saw back at Mazatlan on the lower right portion. Yeah, that's crazy. 3,400 folks watching the, the Blanco Lirio feed here. I hope I don't get in trouble with NASA. So we got, they're talking about the solar maximum. We're pretty close to a, a solar maximum, which is another great thing about this particular eclipse. Not only is the geometry working out that the moon diameter equals the sun diameter at this distance at this from the point on earth where you're looking at it but the sun's at a near uh, maximum solar activity so we're getting some great uh, activity from the corona and here comes the diamond bam to see that live that would that would really be something switching out the filters as it as the as it just gets absolutely washed out <laughs> well apparently 960 did follow his checklist <laughs> properly because it looks like so far they've got a successful mission now did they follow their mission checklist and did <laughs> Did the young lady in back capture all the data that she said she was going to do? She, she promised us she was going to do her best. Yeah. Um, Dr. Who asked, I wonder how ham frequencies are being affected by the shadow. And that's one of the many things that the uh, WB57s are researching is, a, um, is the ionosphere. In the bell of the, of the uh, aircraft, they've got uh, something that's studying the shadow as it tracks across the clouds and the uh and the terrain uh, and also to see how it impacts the ionosphere uh from the eclipse the shadow from the eclipse is it cooling off you can feel it cooling off <laughs> no more rocket license for me that's right. Uh, it's a, the shadow's moving across uh, at about one. The shadow of the eclipse is moving ac across the Earth at about 1,500 miles per hour. So it's passing up everything except for if we had an SR-71 like we talked about earlier. Got some decent pictures. Uh, so, yeah, it, sh it should be hitting <clears throat> up towards Dallas pretty soon now. Thanks, Mary. Oh, filter the altitudes. Uh, Room says, if you filter the altitudes above 40,000 feet, you'll see a line of Gulf streams from Eagles Pass to Toronto just circling. <laughs> I wonder how ATC is dealing with all that. Uh, how do I filter the altitude? So if I go here... Um, add a new filter. Uh, where's the altitude filter? Uh, aircraft route. No. Oh, right there, dummy. All right, so let's take it up to. Let's try that thirty-eight thousand feet. Well, let's let's back it off a bit. Let's say uh, thirty-five thousand feet. Add that. Now, what do I get? Continue. Save. new filter okay now is it working None look <laughs> how do I get it to apply the filter well okay I guess that's no it's it's applied 
So I'm going to have to crank that up even higher. Uh oh, don't lose my, I don't want to lose my formation here. There they are. Uh, let's see, let's adjust this filter. Now, how do I go back and adjust that filter? This has got to be painful to watch me suffer through this. <laughs> Let's take it to right there. Let's add that. Continue. Save. Okay. Now what do we got? Huh. No, that can't be right. T38s are out there at 39,000. Yeah, no, I didn't I didn't get it to apply correctly. <laughs> yeah. If Pete was here, I'd have it licked. Step one, read comments. <laughs> Uncheck the other ones. Uncheck the other filters you don't want. I can't read the comments and <laughs> check and uncheck filters. Step one, read comments. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, he's up there orbiting around 50,000 feet. And I set my high filter up a little too high. I filtered out just about everything. Let's edit that. Okay, turn them all off. We're back to knobs normal. Now, I probably lost our research vessels. Seven zero. No, that's the wrong one. PC twelve. Well, that is the huh? Well, they're they do have a PC twelve research rig. Look at my nine two seven. All right, coming up on uh, Durango, Mexico. There we are. Heading back for home. <laughs> 
PWA reports breaking news just announced that Sun and Fun Fun will not be able will not be enabled until Sun returns. <laughs> yeah, the WB 57s are close to each other. They're working together in um, well, it kind of looked like trail formation today in order to collect data. I thought they were going to come beside each other and try to collect the same data at the same time, but um, they're working a little bit in it looks like in trail formation here on. Well, no, now they're now they're coming right up side by side. Look at that. But the eclipse has passed them up and it is well ahead of them by now. So I think they've already gotten all their data and are now just heading heading back to Houston. Delta 1218 is the Delta Eclipse flight from Austin, Texas. Wow. Yeah, they're now flying side by side. What's what's Southwest 3006 doing? All right, getting some all the way up in Halifax. November 926, November Alpha. Set the filter at 42,000 feet. Yeah. That dog just barks all the time. Mostly at the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, Mark has a good point. With all these planes flying in circles, TCAS system having a fit. Well, probably not TCAS so much as they're not... Hopefully they're not getting that close. But it's certainly given ATC a fit. And that might be something... <clears throat> interesting to listen to if you guys pull up um live atc maybe from dallas for example or maybe later on today when it gets up into the boston area and see how things go there with atc especially if they have to deal with a lot of general aviation traffic that is huh, yeah once you get into the states you're gonna See, the general aviation traffic is not heading down into Mexico. Now, look at this. Uh, look at all this traffic lining up here. Um, what's it? See, for example, uh, here come all the look out. Here come all the Cirrus pilots. Oh, man, it's going to be a Cirrus flying. Everybody grab your caps. <laughs> oh, and watch the uh, watch the eclipse. Let's see. That's Delta. That's Blazer. T-45. He's out on a training mission. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of GA aircraft out beating around. Here's uh, looks like a twin Piper. He's going to he's going to get in there and watch it. So it looks like if you zoom in here, it looks like there's plenty of big sky enough for all the um bug smashers <laughs> this cirrus he just set it all up on autopilot popped open his bottle of wine and he's just gonna sit here and wait and see what happens <laughs> uh got a little piece of space air piece of airspace hopefully nobody bothers him uh what was what kind of altitudes are we talking about for these guys here oh wow he's way up there 17.6 man he's he's getting above Above the bug smashers. Come on, that can't be right. Really? No. This, this, that doesn't make any sense. Unless they're trying to get above the weather there. So, is that what's going on? Guys getting above the clouds here, way up there at 17,000 feet. Because we're talking, uh huh. Oh, what's his? 11,000 feet. <laughs> Zigzagging around at uh, 11,000 feet. Yeah, you're going to start needing oxygen. 12,000 feet. Hmm. Let's go. Let's try a live ATC. Uh, I, I don't know if 
Go on, listen to What should we listen to? Dallas Arrival, Clarence. Uh, regional Approach, Regional Feeder East, Feeder West. What do you think would be a good live ATC? Have you guys found a good live ATC link? see i don't want to go for a tower i want to i want to north and south east west let's listen in here and see if this works probably get an ad Dallas weather winds are out of the south. Scattered at twenty five thousand feet. Well, I don't know if anything's gonna come up there or not. We'll just let it go in the background and see if something pops up there. All right, back to Zoom Earth, and it is cutting across the country here. Wow, that's a big shadow. Where'd our research flight go? saying he's still way down there in Torholm. Yep. All right. What's going on at NASA? We're at, uh, oh, look at that, Dallas. Wow, you're there. It's happening. Even with the clouds, it's getting pretty dark out there. It is moving fast across the country. You two seems to be heading towards Hawaii. Yeah, less than a minute to go in Dallas. It's uh, 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 so that's uh, live ATC Dallas West. Not much going on. Not much going on there. Pretty hard to understand too. Just about total at Dallas. Uh, let's see. Let's go check this real quick. Mm, amount of bitcoins, Ethereum, <laughs> uh, that's something else. Just about totality there at Dallas, forty seconds. Dallas, Texas, we are seconds away. Oh, my goodness. I can feel my heart racing. You can hear the crowd. 
they got a lot of airtime to fill there at NASA. Now, with the cloud cover they're looking at through that telescope, will they get any of the corona totality, or will it just be dark? <laughs> I got to have the kids help me type. I can't type. You should see the kids go at it. All right, there they go. <laughs> There's Dallas. Let's see if they change the filter up and can catch any of the corona. Is that the stars or is that dirt on my <laughs> screen? <laughs> dirt. Let's see what they change the filter to here for the Dallas camera. <laughs> dealing with the clouds. Yeah, it got really dark. Oh. And knowing that people literally across the nation are doing the same thing is, uh, it's truly amazing. <sighs> Let's take a moment just to take it all in. This is absolutely breathtaking. Okay, now they got a good filter on it. You can see that spiky structure of the corona that's indicative of, of, of our approach to solar maximum. Go. That asymmetrical uh, nature of the corona happens when you're in solar maximum. That's going to be happening in about a few months from now. So that means that this view of the corona will never happen again, ever. This is a completely unique view. <laughs> it's totally dark there in, in Dallas. You'll never quite see one. You guys seeing this in Dallas? So, Michael, you study the sun. What is it like to see a corona that you don't normally see? I mean, I, I just, there are words. Um, I spend my life studying this thing, and to be able to see it and feel it. There's a good picture. It's just tremendous. Um, <clears> now, again, you can see that um, that flare in about the 4 o'clock position the still the cooking spot. off. And that, that pink loop is what I spent five years doing a dissertation on. <laughs> that, that one little pink loop. And it, it's just, it makes it all. Pretty much total darkness there at Dallas. There's a cool shot. That's kind of what it looked like in the WB fifty sevens. Um, just a black, a black hole sun, as Soundgarden used to sing, with a big old corona around it. Fredericksburg, Texas. Fort Worth, American 239, 12-5, uh, spending on the victory two for uh, 5,000. Yeah, those guys working, coming into Dallas right now. Oh, uh, we have Victor American 239. Yep. Are getting a good, good view of this. There's another flare at about uh, 2 o'clock position, 1 o'clock Pachala, Boy 3677, level 111,280 on this street, and we'll depart to each other, heading 300. Good flare right there. Okay, it's coming out, <clears throat> popping out here after four minutes. Four minutes of totality. Here comes the diamond ring, in Dallas, Texas. Blammo. Okay, let it go, let it go, man. Ah, oh, they switched the filter too soon. <clears throat> Look, you can see the daylight return on the ground there.
Approach on boy, uh, 3677, can we uh, expect 28 rates? 20 25% in Vermont? 28 rates, thanks, Alboy, 36. Uh, good question. Did DFW have to turn the runway lights on, or did they come on automatically? We'll have 84% totality in South Carolina, and it's getting dimmer already. Yeah, incredible flares, huh? Yeah, what does Tom Cruise think of this? <laughs> Mark says, oh, great, a black screen. <laughs> There's a P-51 Mustang out there flying around looking at it, 201 Foxtrot. So there's the map, the NASA map. <clears throat> okay, let's check Zoom Earth here, 1120. Let's zoom out a little bit. So do replay of the whole day here from sunrise. Boom, here it comes, and it's trucking very quickly across the country. 1,500 miles per hour. Let's see how air traffic is doing. Current live view of the air traffic is pretty busy. It's going to be pretty busy traffic right along the, the path there. And, of course, big hub airports like Dallas and Houston. All right, right in the way. Yeah, and the map he's looking at is something like this right here. Do we have any other live streams worth checking out? <laughs> live stream checking out a live stream. Anyways. Get out there and enjoy it today. It's going to be coming to a town near you soon. Uh, if you're just joining us, we've been watching the WB-57 NASA research aircraft trucking across the eclipse, chasing it down, getting good data for study of the sun's corona, using these classic old... Uh, British electric jets, the WB-57s. be very interesting to get an update and see what they collected today, and hopefully we'll get some great pictures of all that. And it's very interesting to watch it come across Zoom Earth here, uh, work just as, just as imagined, tracking the shadow of the moon in an almost live satellite view. I'm going to get back to work. Got a couple of NTSB reports to do. Got to go back for a landing currency sim as well. So thank you so much for your support, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. Be sure and use your glasses if you're going to go out there and watch this. One more quick check on the uh, comment section. Yeah, a general aviation filter might be fun to watch. Yeah, get out there and uh, tune up these different apps like I showed you today. The Zoom Earth, the Flight Radar 24, ADSB data, the live stream from NASA. And um, you can just watch the whole thing unfold before your very eyes. Uh, Stellarium, one last look at that. I think we are, yeah, we're pretty much out of it here in California. Still a bit of a bite of it here in California. Roger that, Envoy 3677. So we'll look forward to seeing that data from uh, NASA soon. Get some more NTSB reports out for you. Thank you so much for your support. We'll see you here. Pete, where's the off button here? There it is, end stream.